All right, what's up everybody? So today the topic I have is plateaus and stalls in your muscle growth. This is probably the worst feeling when you're lifting and when you realize that what you've been doing for the past few weeks, the past few months hasn't been effective. And that's a pretty tough pill to swallow. The reality is that we all face things like this at some point in our lifting career. The best lifters do, the worst lifters do even more. So with that being said, I got five reasons why your muscle growth has plateaued, why your gains have stalled. Let's dive right into it. The first one is you've been lifting for more than three years, so you've reached your genetic potential. So, oh wait, no, wrong list. So number one, you don't film your training, and this is basically just effort levels in general. Now, I'll touch on the filming in a second, but this is tough to hear because I bet most of you guys listening to this are upset. And you're like, oh yeah, we know train harder, but I'm telling you, I promise you if you aren't filming your training and haven't filmed your training regularly in the past, at least like 25% of your lifts, if not more in your program, you're not executing them to the best of your abilities. And I mean that in two ways. One, of course, is technique. You have to film your sets to understand what your technique is, if it's good or bad. And that's a pretty big deal. And then on top of that, arguably more important is your effort levels and your proximity to failure. A lot of the time, and this even happens with myself, where I've been training hard for years at this point, I sometimes watch my clips and I know that I could have put more in on that set. And when hypertrophy is a game of chasing stimulus, that's a pretty tough feeling to know, all right, I got all ready to go to the gym, went to the gym, got the machine set up, did my warmups, did an entire set and stopped two reps before what I needed to, to actually really stimulate growth. Like I went through all of that just to skip the most stimulative portion of the set. It doesn't really make any sense. And it's a, it's a big regret that I have when I watch a set and know that I had another rep or two in the tank. I'm not saying you have to take everything to zero RIR or two failure or beyond, but a lot of the time it feels harder than it looks. And how it looks is arguably more accurate than how it feels when it comes to stimulus. So I would say, especially for your lifts that are like quote unquote more challenging, lifts that require either bigger muscle groups, or maybe it's a compound, so there's more muscles and more joints involved. It's really not a bad idea to film your sets. I know it's awkward to film in the gym. Most of you guys train in a commercial gym. It's weird to set up your tripod or have someone film you. It's awkward. I get it. Once you do it a few times, it becomes normal. I've been doing it for years at this point, so I'm, I'm just numb to it. But it will be a complete game changer, and I promise you, you will at least have some form of value in some form of value that will transition directly into growth if you film your sets. I can say that guaranteed for at least 90% of you guys watching this, it will be a game changer. Don't just listen to this and not do anything. Actually do something. If you have to order a tripod, go for it. They're like 20 bucks on Amazon. Highly, highly recommend. Number two, the reason why your muscle growth has stalled is that you prioritize sensation over stimulation and execution. So what this means is you stick to lifts that either you feel a lot or you stick to lifts and you judge a lift or you judge your technique based on what you feel. And the problem with this is that's not necessarily a bad thing, but execution and setup overrides that. So if you have proper execution for a lift, and the perfect example for this is back training in general, but I'll touch on that in a second. If you have proper execution and proper setup, the bind-muscle connection and the sensation that you get of training that muscle, I'm not going to say it doesn't matter, but if it doesn't feel quite right, or it's not like a, a crazy pump or anything, it might not be a big deal. And I'll tell you right now, about half the lifts in my program, give or take, I don't really like quote-unquote connect that well with, and I, I don't like to use that term. Because ultimately what hypertrophy comes down to, it's it's mechanics. Lift is like lifting is mechanics, it's biomechanics, it's how does your body move through a certain plane. And when you have a lift that doesn't quite like feel right, you don't get much of a pump or a contraction, that's okay. There's a few reasons for that, and that's just it, it kind of depends on the strength curve, the rep range that you're working in, and of course your proximity to failure, your rest times, your total volume amounts. But what I'm trying to say is if your execution is proper and your setup's proper and you understand from a biomechanical perspective that that muscle's being trained hard through a full range of motion with good proximity to failure, it's okay to not feel it. However, with some lifts, of course, this is going to be a good indicator. So I'm not saying to ditch the idea of the mind-muscle connection and the sensation entirely, but 
if a lift has good mechanics and you're executing it properly and you filmed your set and everything looks good, it's okay not to feel it entirely. So don't limit yourself and don't ditch good lifts just because you don't feel them the whole ton. When I do hack squats, I basically feel nothing, but I understand the mechanics of a hack squat and I, I know how it works. It trains my quads and my quads have grown from hack squatting even though I feel nothing. So that's a, that's a good example right there. Number three, this one's for the OG fans of the channel. You have progressive overload anxiety. I'm not gonna spend a whole ton of time on this because this is basically the concept of my entire channel. But a lot of the time, you guys get way too greedy with how much you need to progress in order to stimulate growth. Keep in mind that progression, and this is my opinion, progression in the gym, so the progression that you have on paper in the gym, happens from the growth that you're receiving from the lifts that you're doing in your program. So as you grow, you get bigger and your muscle can output more performance. We get way too greedy with this sometimes. And a lot of the time, our growth is going up very slightly, but the progression on the lift is somehow going a little bit steeper upwards. And that's an issue because you're just getting greedy. And that's always going to come at the expense of something. It's going to come back to bite you because you're going to have to do a technique reset or you're going to get hurt and not trying to fear monger. The injuries are much less common than you think in bodybuilding and lifting in general. But we get way too greedy with our lifting numbers. We get too egocentric. We're all guys. I know I have like 1% of my channel's viewers are females. So uh, I can't say all guys, but I think I can speak on behalf of most guys. We, we tend to be very numbers oriented. We're very ego driven. And you have to be able to manage that. You have to be able to overcome it. You have to be able to separate that emotion from a practical progression and practical numbers that you actually realistically can hit and get good stimulus from. So this doesn't mean you should just like not worry about tracking your training at all, because I do think it's useful to have a logbook. But what I'm trying to say here is don't chase numbers at the expense of everything else and watch any other video on my channel to get a deeper description of that. Number four, and this is a very, very big one. You lack structure and you lack a structured cut and bulk cycle or recomp cycle in particular. And what I mean, what I mean by this is a lot of people, and this is mostly like the strength oriented guys I find are guys that come from a background of being strength oriented you tend to not worry too, too much about the cut and bulk cycles that you need to actually grow muscle. Because keep in mind, we're not just chasing performance or numbers at a certain body weight. We're not chasing like that ratio or anything. You're trying to build muscle. So when you're going into the gym and you build a stimulus and your muscle has to grow, it has to repair and grow, you need to know what your, what your goal is. Is this a program that's designed for bulking and putting on muscle? And do you have your bulk and calories and your target weight for each month set up so you can actually make progress and use that surplus to build muscle? That's pretty important. And I find that a lot of guys get way too caught up in the specifics of the program itself. And they think that the training will just take care of everything. You don't have to set a proper cut and bulk cycle. And this, of course, the elephant in the room here is recomps. That's a different story. That's very situational. I'm not going to touch on that today, but assuming the people listening to this are in uh, a, a regular healthy body fat percentage range that you like to cut and bulk in that you feel comfortable at it's very important to have a proper mid to long term so short term mid term and long term plan of when you're going to cut and when you're going to bulk so this will obviously help facilitate growth it will support the training that you're doing in the gym and most importantly, it will actually let you grow and continue to progress. So when I see guys and hear guys talking about how maybe they're hitting a plateau and their numbers in the gym are stalling out, you're zooming in too much on the program itself and you're not zooming out and saying, well, how am I going to get my numbers up that much in the gym if I'm not feeding myself enough to actually grow muscle? So where would these adaptations come from in the first place is what I would ask to you. So I'm not saying that diet is more important than training because I objectively don't think it is more important than training because training is what gives you the growth, but you have to be able to support that growth. So the last thing you want to do, go and have a great session, make a bunch of stimulus happen and be ready to grow and then just not support that and let that go to waste. It's a horrible thing. I see it happen way too often. So set a proper cut and bulk cycle, make your, bulk, your bulks productive. I, I always advocate to like kind of, I don't want to say stretch them out, but you can bulk more than you think you can uh, in terms of duration, especially if it's a productive bulk where you're putting on more muscle. 
keep your cuts efficient, get it over with, try and lose two pounds a week if you can, keep it as short as possible, get in, get out, and get right back to bulking because that's actually productive. That's the way I see it. Number five, the last one I got for you guys today, is you're trying to do everything at once and you lack specialization. And this can really mean anything. This can be anything from the exercise selection to trying to cut and bulk at the same time and making emotional decisions. And a lot of this lack of specialization and being all over the place is just having general, I would just say as simple as it is, as silly as it sounds, you have FOMO. You hear this all the time where people start to cut, but then they feel small, so they go back to bulking, you start to bulk, you catch yourself at a weird angle in the mirror and you think you're fat and then you decide to cut and you're basically just going back and forth. And this is essentially the same issue that I talked about in, in number four, where you just don't really have a structured cut and bulk cycle. This is one nice thing about having that structure is it takes that emotional indecision out of it and that will override it. So when you have a plan you can stick to, you're not worried about if you like feel fat or if you feel small and all these little feelings that a lot of you guys get throughout the day, uh, whether you have a good day or bad day or whatnot this will help override that and keep you on the proper track and you can just focus on your training. It, it really is quite nice. So to move into the exercise selection portion of this final point, a lot of the time we're way too concerned with hitting every muscle at every angle in every possible way. And this is a pretty simple one. I think we've generally moved beyond this, but I, what I want you guys to understand is that when you're training a muscle with a lift, that muscle's being trained, I don't want to say in it in its entirely because I am a fan of understanding biomechanics and resistance profiles and strength curves and all that kind of stuff. But if I'm doing like one variation of a lat pull down, it's still training basically my entire lat. It's just a certain area is a little bit more biased based on my setup. So that doesn't mean that the entire other portion is neglected. Like if I'm doing a lengthened bias, that doesn't mean I have to include a shortened bias and a horizontal pull and a vertical pull. And each one of them has to have a shortened and lengthened bias with a different grip. You can get pretty good growth from one or two lifts. You don't need a million different lifts in a million different ways. And when you try and do that, you're basically the jack of all trades, master of none. And when you're training for hypertrophy, you kind of have to master a few lifts. I'm not saying to just master one. I'm not a fan of minimalism whatsoever, as you guys know, but dialing it in on a couple specific lifts that you have in your program that are well-rounded, that all complement each other is going to be key. You can't do everything at once. There's no point in trying because it just won't work. You're going to sandbag and you, when you lack precision, you're kind of all over the place. And hypertrophy, in my opinion, is a game of precision. So with that being said, those are the five points that I have for today. I would strongly encourage thinking about all of these, especially the first one, filming your sets. It really is a good idea to start doing. It probably will make a noticeable difference in your training. So with that being said, all I got for today. See you guys in the next one.